everybody, my name is Johnny from Otherwise Education. Let me tell you what we're doing today. This lesson links to one that Joe did about magic realism. And today we're learning all about something called the uncanny, which might be a word you've not heard before. Now, the uncanny talks about things which are familiar, like you've seen them before, but at the same time, strange. It's an idea that was developed by Sigmund Freud, one of the godfathers of psychoanalysis, over a hundred years ago, and it really reminded me of some of the books which we might know. One of the things that Sigmund Freud said might channel the fear of the uncanny was the idea of a doppelganger. The weird idea that there might be somebody out there who looks a little bit too much like you. It's not terrifying, but it gives you a weird feeling of, like, awkwardness. With the uncanny, it's not about horror and it's not about fantasy. It's about normal, everyday objects suddenly taking on a bit of a strange quality. There is a childness to the uncanny. It's there in the feeling that you get that your toys might have feelings and might come to life. It might be the feeling that you get in the woods, that there's something nearby, or something magical might be about to happen. The forest is a brilliant setting for uncanny, slightly surreal writing, because so many of the children's stories that we know are set here. Lots of fairy stories, lots of folk tales, Hansel and Gretel, all of these familiar stories are there in our minds, and you can't help but think of them when you walk into a forest. Now because of that, we can play with it because that is the familiarity. We know what we might see in a forest, in a fairy story, but maybe we'll see it in real life too. One of my favorite writers for children is the picture book artist, William Stieg. Now he wrote lots of things. One of them was Shrek, which was set in the forest too. His writing isn't just about a fairy story and it's not really like the film that we might have seen either. In his writing, there is no absolute good and there's no absolute bad. The happy ending doesn't necessarily happen because it doesn't necessarily happen in life either. Instead, we hover and we go with what happens. So we don't question why there's an ogre in the forest. We don't question that there's a talking donkey. We don't question whether he's happy or sad at the end. He starts the story as a disgusting, stinky ogre and he ends the story as a disgusting, stinky ogre. The forest, really, in many ways, is a regular setting. For you, your regular places that you know might be your local shops, your local high street, the street where you play, the place that you live. All of these normal settings can become very abnormal through this kind of writing. Perhaps your characters transform, perhaps things don't behave quite as they seem. In a place like a forest, you can easily see how a regular person might have a small, sudden, magical surge of power. I don't know how I can do this. I didn't make the world. Think about the things that creep you out and then maybe place those things into a familiar setting, a safe setting, a happy setting like here in the forest. Sometimes these stories hold on and they get stuck in our imagination. So they get passed on for generation and generation and generation. Maybe you're about to write one. 